Now, are you having other, since the film has come out, are you having other whistleblowers reach out to you um, yes. for support or just, you know, saying how much they like the film or just actually for help and that kind of thing? Are you having that happen? Yeah, yeah. So we had, um, so I made the film um, with a whistleblowing charity called Protect, who are based in the UK, and they are an incredible charity. They... So you can call them if you're thinking about whistleblowing or seen wrongdoing in your in your workplace, and and they will give you legal advice. It's all free. They'll tell you how to maneuver your way through the situation. Um, and a lot of major whistleblowers have gone through Protect, and so we I worked very closely with them. So two of the people, Bob and Necka, who are in the film, who comment on the typical journey of a whistleblower. Um, they work for Protect. And we had a, for my screening at Raindance that um, was very much in conjunction with Protect. And so there was a lot of whistleblowers <laughs> at my screening, which was, which was incredible. And, and it meant so much that they watched the documentary and that they felt something for it. The atmosphere in the room was, was electric in the screening because it was just so people really apparently they were whooping or you know when they when they when Rose was saying a few things about Weinstein and about and 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 with Helen and and that's that's good to know that mm -hmm. to get their acceptance that I did a film that, that felt that felt right for them right. that resonated with them and so after the screening we had I had a lot of whistleblowers come up to me but also contact me and say you know can you um connect me with this person and would Helen like to come and speak and you know everyone wanted to know about Rose <laughs> and um and nice. yeah there was a lot a lot of people reaching out and, and a lot of the time I say look just go go to protect there's such a good mm -hmm. charity in the UK um but yes I, I had a, quite quite a few people saying I'm going through we actually had people in in the screening we did a Q&A after the screening mm -hmm. and um, there were two or three whistleblowers who spoke out there and then telling us they're experiencing it was like people were just uh, pouring their heart out at the screening it it was very moving and you know mm -hmm. they're just incredible people yeah and for survivors you know of sexual assault coming out about powerful mm -hmm. people you know, um, and you had two of those women in your film. One of the challenges is you get approached sometimes by other people that don't have the best intentions. So it's, it's really, you find yourself kind of almost defensive or protective because, you know, there's a lot of trickery, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, I think that the fact that you worked with Protect is, it, in tandem was really was really positive. And yes. um, we don't have something equivalent like that in the United States. Uh, mm. Time's Up was actually uh, revealed and it's been dismantled as a catch and kill for powerful men. And they were actually, um, you know, in not just my case, but in the, the Cuomo survivors cases, they got exposed for actually colluding with the monster so to speak yes um, yeah I heard yeah, and in my case yeah. too and in fact um I think it was Cuomo's uh, upper staff and the time's up were talking on text and it got revealed in the criminal hearing that they were saying well we can now victim shame on the record because of Tara Reid's case with Joe Biden I mean how that, isn't that amazing these are people and and the top of power right that are that are doing that and um my whole goal when I came forward was to inform my citizens fellow citizens but also to help other survivors and I, I speak to Lindsay Boylan, who's one of the Cuomo survivors, and we've talked about this, about the, just the treachery and the corruption. And I'm glad that in the UK, there's somewhere to go because there is literally nowhere safe to go mm. um, in the United States right now. There's- Yeah, and how do you ever, for something like that to happen, how do you ever mm -hmm. trust anyone? How can you ever <laughs> trust anything yeah. that, that when something like times out, even that turns its back on you. More uh, than turn their back. I mean, they they actually yes. took the information, right? And tricked me. Three people were on Joe Biden's payroll when I came to them for help and they didn't tell me. They were already yeah. working for him, getting money from him. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah, there needs it's, it's to be- It's despicable. 
It is. It absolutely is. And there needs to be more mm-hmm. protection for whistleblowers, but more absolutely. support. Like we didn't, there's a moment in the film where Catherine is, Catherine Garn is talking about having to, having told the story so many times, you know, she, she was in the cinema. She's, she's watched Kira Knightley play her over and over and over again. She did this yes. tour of the world and, and, and she can, and she can relay this story of what happened to her. And yet no one ever asked her if she was okay. And if it really affected her afterwards, mm. what happened afterwards, you know, um, so her case got kicked out of court um, because, you know, she's going up against the UK government. So right. they don't really want her to expose the what the goings on what behind friends? the curtain. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So so she, you know, they, they dragged her soul all the way through the mud just so mm-hmm. they could break her to get her into the court courtrooms right. just mm-hmm. to immediately say, by the way, we're throwing this out. And so she's relieved but then disappointed and no one and that for for the film the Hollywood film ends there but Mm -hmm. her life carries on and we speak to her about what happens after that and Mm -hmm. she as you'll see in the film she's hugely affected because she was so used to talking about the story up to a point Mm -hmm. her experience and then when you talk to her afterwards she just says, I didn't have this support. I didn't have this. I don't know. I didn't know who I could talk to about mm-hmm. what happened afterwards and about the aftermath and how I was treated. Because I right. think when you're going through that, and I don't know from, but from what I've seen in the whistleblowers I've spoken to, when you're going through exposing the truth and whistleblowing, you probably get a heightened sense of adrenaline and stress and trauma, but you're going through this trauma and then mm-hmm. afterwards, if you don't talk to anyone about that, that's going to start eating you up. And what was very, very common in, in my film and that we talk about a lot is a level of PTSD mm-hmm. and mental health issues and anxiety. And that is born a lot from as well, not being able to trust people. And, and how can you, when all of your safety and security around you that you thought was trustworthy lets you down like that. And, that just does so much to you as a human being that you need support and it is great it is great that in the UK we've got protect they understand the levels of bureaucracy as well but they're there to support as well mm-hmm. um I know that Catherine started to meet up with a lot of um whistleblowers on a global level and go to yeah. conferences just so just to talk to other other people that had gone through a similar experience to her and I think it massively helped I think it helped a lot good good did you you know it's interesting I was going to ask you if um the British media continued to drag her or if they or if it was just silence then after that because she didn't really get to say her piece in court which was why right mm. publicly I mean the film came out yeah. of secrets but yeah. before that I'm, I'm, I was just thinking did she write an um an op-ed or did she get to express that in any way at that time why she did what she did because it was just sort of left there I think I think it was just left there it's like I think they took a long time to make the film I think Mm -hmm. that took about 10 years to try and get the film made 10 years yeah because it was like you know dropping in and out of interest and going around around the houses and stuff Mm -hmm. um so I think she ultimately uh, I think they'd I think it it, it'd been forgotten about you know it got dropped Mm -hmm. it was like Okay, I think there was this, you know, email that said about coercing mm-hmm. swing nations to invade Iraq illegally, you know, and it's like actually that's a massive deal. But but it's the same, you know, people talk about weapons of mass destruction and we can all talk about that now, you know, 20 years on, people 10, 20 years on, anything like that, people now say, okay, it's a bit more, I can now talk about it a bit more freely than almost when it was going on I think it was like it exposed it came out and then it it dropped off the face of the earth (laughs) 